We use the cross product in three-dimensional geometry and multivariable calculus whenever we need to take two vectors and produce a third that is perpendicular to the original two vectors. It's a super useful tool, but why does it work? Hey, welcome back. My name is Drew, and in this video, I'm gonna talk about where the cross product comes from, and in particular, why it has that super useful property of being perpendicular to both of its inputs. All right, here we go. Let's start with some background info so that we're all on the same page. If we have two three-dimensional vectors, u and v, then their cross product is another 3D vector that's calculated like this. Now, this is a pretty weird formula, and I never recommend that anyone actually memorize it. We'll talk more about how to compute cross products in a second, but for now, it's worth noting that the main reason the cross product is useful is that as long as u and v aren't parallel, u cross v is a non-zero vector that's perpendicular to both u and v. The picture I usually have in mind for this is that if u and v are two vectors that are both parallel to a plane in three-dimensional space, then u cross v will be a vector that's perpendicular to the plane. But like I said, most people don't use that complicated formula to compute cross products. There are loads of different ways to do it. Uh, the one I'm gonna show you involves matrix determinants. So if we have a three by three matrix like this one, then one way to compute its determinant is to expand along the top row. What that means is for each number in the top row, we cross out the row and column of the matrix containing that number, and then we multiply the number by the determinant of the two by two matrix that remains. Doing this for each number in the top row gives us three terms, and we combine them by adding the first and third and subtracting the second. Now, to use this to compute the cross product of two vectors, we build a three by three matrix where the first row consists of the standard unit vectors i, j, and k, and the second and third rows are the vectors that we want to cross. Taking the determinant of this matrix by expanding along the top row gives us an expression that looks like this. And if we remember that i, j, and k are just stand-ins for the unit vectors 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1, then the expression we end up with is the same as the formula for the cross product that I showed you at the beginning of the video. So instead of remembering the formula, you can just remember the algorithm to compute three by three determinants. I think that's a little bit easier, but your preference may vary. So that's how we compute cross products. But before we get into the reasons behind why they're perpendicular, I should say a little bit about what it means for two vectors to be perpendicular. Enter the dot product. The dot product is another way to combine two three-dimensional vectors together, except it's fundamentally different from the cross product in that its output is a scalar, or in other words, it's just a number. But the dot product has its own host of useful geometric applications. In particular, the dot product of two vectors is zero exactly when those two vectors are perpendicular. So if two vectors form a right angle when you put their tails together, then their dot product is zero and vice versa. Okay, so we know about cross products and how to compute them using determinants. And we know about dot products and the relationship between dot products and perpendicularness. Let's put those things together. So our original goal was to show why the cross product of u and v is perpendicular to both u and v. From what we've discussed about the dot product, this is equivalent to saying that u dot u cross v and v dot u cross v are both zero. Let's just focus on one of those two statements. It's worth noting that we could just directly compute this expression using the formulas for the cross product and the dot product, and we would get zero, but that's not very illuminating and it sort of misses the point here. If we bring back the determinant formulation of the cross product, then expanding u dot u cross v gives us this expression and that's the same as this determinant. Now, to tie everything together, here's a special fact about determinants that I didn't mention before. If two rows of a matrix are the same, then the determinant of that matrix is zero. So that means that the determinant of this matrix is zero. So the dot product of u and u cross v is zero. 
So u and u cross b are perpendicular. Nice. Now, I'm not a math historian or anything like that, and I don't know when or where or how the cross product originated, but doesn't this make you feel like the right way to define the cross product should have been using the determinant in the first place? For one thing, it makes it a lot easier to see how to compute it, but for another, it makes it a lot easier to see why the cross product has that super useful geometric property of being perpendicular to both of its inputs. So I think it's better. Anyways, I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions or if there's something you learned in a math class that you'd like to see explained, let me know down in the comments. Go ahead and give this video a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more fun math content. Thanks for playing along and I'll see you in the next video.